Welcome back. Now, recently, Arise TV was the proud recipient of an Emmy Award. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Amazing. We, we that, got we it. That. <laughs> now, this is for the documentary Game Changers, How the Harlem Globetrotters Battled Racism in the Nostalgia Program category. Yes, just recently, Harlem Globetrotters great Marcus Haynes died, often called the greatest dribbler in basketball history. Haynes was 89 years old. Now, in honor of Marcus Haynes, here is a look at Arise's documentary. Hello, I'm Julian Phillips. At every competition, they were the top attraction, but paid less than those they played against. Eager fans would line up for autographs, but wouldn't let them into their restaurants or hotels. They were sent as America's ambassadors to the Soviet Union, but treated as second-class citizens at home. They were the best of the best. They were the Harlem Globetrotters. And they were not playing the white man's game. We started the three-point shot. People said it wouldn't work. Heck, we were slam dunking before it was fashionable. Before people knew what slam dunking was, we did that. Despite their name, the Harlem Globetrotters didn't originate in Harlem, but in Chicago. A sports entrepreneur saw the talent and the opportunity created by discrimination. It would turn out to be lightning in a bottle. Abe Shabastain was the guy who figured out that, that black ball players couldn't play anyplace else. Before the NBA, for men of color, came the Globetrotters. We were better ball players and we had a much better team. We are as good, if not better, than you are. You got more opportunities. We don't have those opportunities. We are better. And the only reason that we don't have those opportunities is that our skin is dark. Let's be a little bit uh, fair, and maybe that's kind of sitting here about the white players of that era. They were playing a different type of basketball. They did not have the jumping ability, the athleticism, that a lot of the black players had. He shoots, uh-uh, really foul. Anything for a laugh and let the ref fall where he may. Sore losers called them showboaters, just playing a schoolyard game. These guys were not only the greatest basketball players that were ever playing at that time, they were able to take their basketball and make it look so easy, make it look so easy and good that you can have fun just watching. These boys know the game forward and backward, and when they decide to run up the score, they can get that ball through the basket by one way or another. In 1948, the year after Jackie Robinson broke Major League Baseball's color barrier, President Truman desegregated the U.S. Armed Forces by executive order. The owners in the NBA didn't want blacks on their team. It took until 1950, but finally, the National Basketball Association bowed to the winds of change. Although five black players were drafted, opportunities remained scarce. There appeared to be an unspoken limit. The NBA seemed, as one player put it, to just be adding a little pepper to each roster. And when I came out of college, I couldn't go in the NBA anyway because they had a quota system. I think the NBA was very, very fearful of uh, what they saw in the abilities of so many great men of color playing the game. But while the NBA was slow to add black players, it was quick to realize that the crowds came to see the Trotters. The league would not have survived a big time basketball if the Globe Trotters did play on the other card of these teams. We played on NBA cards because the NBA were not drawing people. People didn't want to come to see that type of basketball. That's why the NBA at the time brought, brought the Globe Trotters in, because they weren't making money. But when the players left the arena, the Trotters confronted the ever-present ugly reality. People often think in terms of the South being heavily segregated, which it was. At the same time, it was also segregated. Uh, there was a lot of racism in uh, the East and the North and the West and the Midwest all over. Their time on the road was a constant challenge. Since they could not rely on being able to eat in restaurants, they had to often eat on the run. One player in the NBA asked me, 
were you as tough as we are in those days? And I had to explain to them, it's a different kind of toughness. The toughness that we had, you couldn't handle. These were reality checks for us, really. It's like, uh, you know, we speak of being celebrity stars and feeling good, but it was a situation like this that really re returned us to normal and made us understand that life is as it is and people are as they are. These are the moves that enchanted fans and frustrated the competition. Skills honed over the course of hundreds, if not thousands of games. It has been more than a half century since the Globetrotters became stars. Now the NBA is a global brand. Salaries are in the stratosphere. Racism is still a part of American life, and even basketball. But the legacy of the Globetrotters shines on. When I see somebody pass the ball behind their back, a dribble behind their back, the other first thing I say, right on. <laughs> 